All right. Step five, <coughs> tutorial number five, specific to a project that you will be doing in Tetro's class uh, or any other class that you will be using pictures. We're set up uh, and the tutorial left, a, left a, well, I didn't export it because I already showed you how to export it in the first one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and delete everything on the timeline loop it all together, hit delete. We're going to push everything back to zero, okay? Now, we're going to go into Media Browser. We're going to go into Teach. And we're going to go into, where's Tetro Editing? We're going to go into the folder that says 2014. All right, now. Remember, we previously set up the timeline to um, create the dimensions for a 1080, 1920 by 1080 video project. These pictures were not taken in that format. So when you use pictures and you put them on the timeline, they're going to be put in the format that they're normally in unless your timeline is set up for video. Okay, does that make sense? So in other words, when you use, if you don't set up your pictures for video or your timeline for the video, the 1920 by, by 1080, okay? If you don't do that, then your pictures are gonna be either really, really, really big or really, really, really small. I'm not sure which one it is, but that's the way it is. But today we're gonna teach you how to change that. Again, you would want to use video to set up your timeline, okay? So what we're going to do is I don't have video. We've already set up our timeline in the earlier tutorials for video. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this picture, bring it up here to our source window, and you can already see that it's a smaller picture, smaller frame. We're going to do an in, and we're going to go for about four seconds, three and a half, three seconds, 25 frames, and we're going to do a period. All right. Now, you'll notice we just talked about audio, video. Okay. There's no video on pictures. There's no audio on pictures. All right. So there's no reason to have the video, I mean, the audio on. I had it on. It didn't bring anything over. Okay. What's going to happen is the, the more advanced editing you get, you're going to set your audio levels, and I mean, not your audio levels, but you're going to set your audio timeline and first, and then you, well, not first. You're going to set your audio timeline with your video, and then you don't want to mess up that timeline, okay? Because then you got to go figure out, figure out how to fix it. So what you want to do is you want to turn it all off. So when you bring in pictures, all right, if you notice, the difference in the size of the picture between what's in the source window from the original source of the picture versus what's in the timeline window or the program window, the final window on the timeline is different. This is where that setting up your timeline with video becomes extremely important, okay? Um, Um, we're going to change this, but I'm going to go ahead and do one small, small thing real quick and do that. So anyway, <coughs> so how do you get them to be the same size as, so you can see, and you want to see that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to jump to and add another picture right here. We're going to add another picture with an in and an out. Okay, now we have two pictures. You see the difference? Okay. So, here's where this comes up. Up in your source window, there's a couple of different things that you can do. Metadata is one thing. It just basically tells you about the pictures. It's information about information. Audio, there's no audio on the clip. The source is what the actual source is, so you can see it. And effects control, all right? The effects control only appears if you highlight the clip that you are trying to work on. In other words, on your timeline, you have to clip 
and make it white there in order to use this. Once you use this, once you get that there and you're going to affect this one, you want to go to effects motion and you want to go to scale. Again, let's go through this again. You click here, effect, effects motion and scale. Okay. Click on the one you want to change, effects motion, scale. When you hit scale, you can see it change. So that's how you adjust the size. And now you go back to the source, and they're pretty close. Except for you notice that this one's wider because of the dimensions for the video that you set up. This is set up for 1920 by 1080. This is set up for the camera use, whatever the camera was set to take the picture. It's a lot square, okay? Video, we use a little wide angle, all right? So, go to this one, click the effect that you want, the clip that you want to affect, go to effects control, go to effects motion scale, and adjust it up and down, okay? Now once you've done it, they'll stay that way, okay? Now we're going to jump to the end, and we're going to put another picture on. Let's say we want to use this vertical picture, okay? Guys, for video, vertical pictures are horrible. Again, for video, vertical pictures are horrible. You want to use horizontal. Why? I just showed you why. Because the screen is wider on the edge. Imagine now we're going to take this and we're going to do an in and an out. And we're going to take it and we're going to put it on here. Now, do you see how this black wing area? To get rid of that black wing area, you need to take a horizontal picture, not a vertical picture. Okay? Anytime you use vertical pictures, you're going to get this. All right? But there's a couple of things that you can do to make it different for video and make it work. Highlight the vertical picture that you want to use. Go to Effects Controls. Go to Effects Motion, Scale. You can scale it, but you can't see all the planes on that one. So that's not really what you want to do. So you want to scale it back down to its original size, like this. And oh, you can reposition it. You can position it to the left or to the right. Or you can go up and down by using the position right here, okay? And again, if you want to make if you made a mistake, you just want to go back to reset, you can hit command Z, command Z, command Z, and that'll get you back to where you were. So, in other words, this is what we want to do is we want to scale it here, okay? And we want to move it over here. All right? Now, let's say you want another vertical picture. We're going to do, we're going to put an in and out down here because we want to match it up with that one. We're going to do a three point up here, our third point up here. Oh, forget it. Oh, that's why, because I got a, I got a out point clear in and out. All right. So now we're going to do one here. Whoops. All right. Here's what we're going to do is we've got the picture here. Now we're going to layer the second vertical picture on the other side of the screen. In order to do that, works a lot like Photoshop, you have to put the video or this picture on V2 on the second layer. So what do you do? You have to turn off V1. Turn on V2 and then move V1 to V2. Okay, again, let's do that again. If we do V1 to V1, it's going to cover up what's on this video right here. 
okay? It's going to cover up what's on this layer right here, all right? We want to add the picture so we have the capability of putting it over here. So we have to layer it on top of what's already there. So we have to turn off V1, turn on V2, and then move V1 to V2. And then we can hit period. And you see now it's on there. The reason it's covering it up, the entire screen is being covered and you don't see the other one, is because we have not sized it. Come on, there we go. To match up with the other one. And we want to move it over here. Okay? So, that's how that looks. That's scaling. And the last thing I'm going to teach you, and this, which you'll need this if you're going to do this kind of stuff, okay, is you'll want to get rid of, again, get rid of those bars, those black bars on the edge by being creative and thinking outside the box, okay? Put two pictures in. Let's say you want to put in some text. What kind of planes are these? These are blue angels, right? So let's say you want to put in a text. You hit this text, this little T button right here. Once you hit that, you can go up to here, and you, sec you see that little uh, arrow? You hit the T button, you go up here, you can click anywhere in the window, and it creates a red box. And you just start typing, okay? Okay. Now once that's there, you go back to this area right here in the selection tool, you select the arrow, and then you can size and move it around, okay? You can put it over the picture if you want, it doesn't matter. Be creative, okay? I will recommend instead of doing blue angels as one box, I recommend doing one word for each box. And the reason I recommend that oops, is because you can manipulate them a lot easier. Okay. Highlight this. You can make this one bigger. You can put that there. Make this one bigger. So it gives you a little bit more flexibility. You can go kind of, kind of creative. All right. But when you're using everything in one box, it moves as one box. So you can be creative to a point, but it moves as one box. You can't move it around and put your in, you know, your different words and be creative that way. So again, now here's an important factor. Whatever, when you start layering, whatever you do on each layer should match up with what you're doing on the bottom layers. Okay. And this is where that spreading your timeline, expanding your timeline using the plus, 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 and the minus, minus, minus is going to be very effective. It's going to come in handy. All right. First, let's use this. And if you noticed, it put your text on V3 because it's on top. If it's Now it's layering. Let's match this up. Okay. What do I mean by matching it up? I hit my jump to and I jump to where I want the uh, text to go to. I click this and I just move it to there. Okay. On the back end. All right. Let's say I want to make it even with V1. Right now, 
I've got this v, V1 is turned off. If I turn V1, then I can jump to V1. All right. Now, here's where you want to do it. Spread it out. And you can see right here, right here, there's your la different layers need to be matched up. So you do what's called trimming. So this little red bar, you take that red bar and you trim backwards. You take this red bar and you trim backwards to where it matches up. That way, they're all on the screen at the same time. You minus, 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 okay? If you don't do this, that flash frame issue that we talked about before, you'll see that, okay? You'll create a flash frame. Does that make sense? Okay, now, the last thing, I know I said that once already, but the last thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you. Let's say you wanna go back and you wanna put something on V1 right in the middle here. Let's say you wanna put another picture right in the middle. You wanna take this picture right here. We do an in and we do an out, okay? Here's what's going to happen. Again, if we hit period, it's going to cover up everything and potentially, let's just say move it here, it's going to cover up everything including our text. Okay, it's going to mess everything up. I'm going to hit period. I'm going to show you what it, why. Do you see what I mean? All right there, it put that picture in there. All right. Let's adjust this picture. Effects controls, scale. All right. Now, the reason it did that is because it covered it up, covered up what we already had there. We don't want that. All right. We're at Command Z. Command Z. All right. Now, instead of hitting period, hit comma. And what that does, comma actually inserts it and moves everything over without affecting anything. Okay, again, Command Z, undo. Instead of hitting period, and we get it messed up here, we can hit comma, and comma inserts it and moves everything down the timeline. You can adjust this. Effects controls, scale. Okay. So that's how you'd be able to move everything around. So there you go. There's one complete assignment. Um, if you wanted to add music, you would just turn on your audio channels and add music. I don't know if Professor Tetro allows that. But if you, if you do, that's how you do it. Okay. Uh, again, don't set the timeline up to your music because all these pictures will be teeny tiny because music audio does not have a video reference, so it just arbitrarily picks the size for the video. So even your video coming out of your camera is going to be teeny tiny or really, really large. It's just kind of weird. So always set up your timeline with your video that you're going to be using the most of and that sets the parameters to usually 1920 by 1080, which is our standard MP format, widescreen format. You learned how to adjust pictures, and we will continue with another tutorial in how to edit uh, using Associated Press, how to edit a reporter package uh, at another time. So other than that, see you next time.